Welcome back to another episode of Dental Marketing Go. I'm your host, Gary Bird. I'm the founder of SMC National, where we help you create, convert, and close more new patients so you can grow the way that you want. All right, welcome to another episode, and I'm super excited for this one because it's a little bit different than what we normally do. One of the top things that we constantly get feedback about and questions around is SEO. And the reason there's reasons for that. There's a lot of vagueness when it comes to SEO, and we're going to talk about the good the bad, and the AI today. And you are going to walk away with enough information for you to be able to make educated decisions around SEO, who to work with, who to stay away from. And this is going to really help you in a short, short amount of time level up what you actually know about SEO and do it in a way that, again, you're going to be able to apply to your practice. This is very specifically built for dentists. If you're not a dentist, turn this off. But if you're a dentist and you're in the dental industry, this is for you. So really quickly, what we'll be covering today is SEO pitfalls, the things to watch out for. There are a ton of scammers in SEO. There's probably more scammers in SEO than any other marketing division out there, more than the ads people, more than uh, the, the website people, more than anybody else. There's tons and tons and tons of scams, and they come in all different shapes and sizes. Next, we're going to talk about the SEO fundamentals. What are the basic things that you just have to have? And then we're going to uh, talk about why you aren't ranking. What If you're not ranking, why? And there's, there's reasons why. And we're going to break those down into categories. And then lastly, we're going to talk about SEO, leveling up your opportunities. And today, my name is Gary. If you don't know, my name is Gary. I'm the founder of SMC National. And I'm really, really excited because I have Eddie here today. And Eddie, I've worked with Eddie for many, many years, many years. Eddie is one of the sharpest SEO people I've ever talked to. He's very, very technical. I had to like, hey, Eddie, I want you to come on and help our audience and he he didn't he doesn't want the shine he doesn't want uh, to be the spotlight but he agreed to come on today and i'm going to tell you you are in for a treat cuz he is an absolute mastermind when it comes to seo i've never met anybody that researches it more that understands it more and he only works in dental so he understands this better than anybody that i've ever worked with in the dental industry so he agreed to come on today so eddie thank you so much for coming on today i'm excited to jump in this with you yeah thank you for having me gary Absolutely. So just a little bit about our company. If you don't know, if you haven't worked with our company before, uh, the name of our company is SMC National. We are, uh, we've been on the Inc. 5000 fastest growing company list three years in a row, which is a pretty big feat because we only work in dental. And so we've been literally one of the fastest growing companies. And the reason for that is our clients have been some of the fastest growing companies in the dental industry. And so that has spilled over to us growing. And that's something that we're really, really proud of. Also, we have a ton of podcasts around dental marketing. We actually have four, and you can check those out. Uh, And also, we have a ton of events. We have in-person events that we do. We have a liner con uh, with ClearCorrect. We have all on sales conferences, dental marketing manager boot camp. Hey, sorry to interrupt the show, but I want to make sure that you're going to Dykema 2024. It's July 10th through the 12th. And guess what? We are going to be speaking on the main stage and we're going to be hosting a boot camp as well. And we want to give away some free tickets. So how do you win these free tickets? You go to smcnational.com, click the little bar that says enter to win free tickets to Dykema, and then you submit your information and everybody's a winner. We're going to be giving a discount to everybody who enters and we're going to be giving away some free tickets to the conference itself and to the boot camp. Make sure you sign up for these right away. Back to the show. We also host a full arch advantage uh, event in partnership with BioHorizons. And there's a QR code. If you want to check out any of our podcasts, any of our events, you can quickly scan that. Go check that out. You can also follow me on social media. I'm the Gary Bird. And you can reach out to me if you have questions, if you have things that you want to connect about, feel free to reach out to me. So that's a little bit about us. We eat, breathe, sleep. And, and exercise and do everything around dental marketing. That's all we do. Like we are psychopaths about dental marketing and even about helping dental offices grow. We actually don't call ourselves a dental marketing company. We are a growth partner. So we help in every single way, including educating you on your SEO. So let's start here, Eddie. What is SEO? Yeah, SEO is short for search engine optimization, and it's just a fancy way of saying getting ranked on Google, which is the biggest search engine for your biggest keywords. So if you're a dentist in Sacramento, for example, you're going to want to be ranked for terms like dentist Sacramento, Sacramento dentist, dentist in Sacramento, California, and so on. So Google introduced maps rankings lately. So the first thing you see on the screenshot are the maps rankings. And then further down is what everyone knows to be the free SEO results. And those are called the natural rankings. 
yeah, organic, natural rankings and maps. I remember when maps were introduced many, many years ago. I was actually deep in the weeds of SEO. And then all of a sudden, Google started putting businesses above the organic and everybody freaked out. <laughs> it was just like, well, what's cool. going on? And they've gotten more and more strict with maps and maps are now only ranked in these small little areas close to the business if you're nearby. So there's been a lot of updates around that. And here's the interesting thing about SEO. It's just going to continue to change. It's just going to continue to add things. They keep adding more ads, local service ads. So we're going to talk a little bit about that, but just SEO as a whole, those are the main things you want to rank for. And really the maps are the most powerful thing to rank for it. Would you agree with that, Eddie? Yeah. If you can get in the maps, you'll be getting more new patients for sure. Awesome. So what is SEO good for? So can you break these down? Yeah. So SEO honestly is not for everybody. For example, if you're in a very small city, maybe 10,000 population, you could be ranked well in the maps and in the natural results, but you might not be getting many clicks just because you're in a smaller city. So you want to make sure you're in a medium to larger city for SEO to work for you. Also, even though SEO is free clicks, you still have to pay money to get to those top SEO spots. So technically it's not free. So you need to have an investment for SEO as well. And then also you need to be patient because SEO is not an overnight thing. Most people might join with a marketing company that promises them results in one to three months, but it might not happen that way. It might take one to three years, for example. Yeah. Cause you're competing and against, lastly, you're competing against that's people, right. right? Like you're, it's not just you. If it was just one person trying to rank, then like you said, in the rural city, then you're going to rank easily, but there's other people mm -hmm. who are actively trying to rank at the same time as you are. That's right. And then lastly, if you have unique offerings such as full arches or dental implants, uh, we can put specific pages on your website to rank for those key terms. Now, they might not get searched for as much as like your city dentist, but there still might be some search volume and you can capture that traffic as well for those special yeah. offerings. Yeah, and we're gonna we're gonna go dive more into this. So like if you do clear liners or if you're a pediatric dentist or if you offer a specific kind of treatment. Now the tricky part about this in dental, especially in the maps, is Google only lets you rank for one category. So if you're a PD and we're gonna talk about this more later, but if you're a pediatric dentist and you're trying to rank for ortho, those are two separate things. You're not gonna be able to Google will not let you rank for both of them. So we'll dive more into that, but these are the basic things that SEO is good for. All right, so let's talk about, first of all, the this this section here, which I think is probably the most important of the things that you need to stay away from or the things you need to be at least aware of, the SEO pitfalls. So let's jump into this. Yeah, so the first pitfall is trying to rank for multiple locations if you're uh, on one page, if you're a multi-location practice. So the way Google works is it likes to provide the most relevant results to its searchers. So for example, if you have a practice in Sacramento and then a suburb in Roseville, if you have all of your locations listed in your footer, for example, or on your contact page, if someone's searching for Sacramento dentist, Google would prefer to show someone just in Sacramento versus someone who, who is in Sacramento and also Roseville because they consider just one address, one location to be more relevant than someone who's all over the place. So even if you might have multi locations, the best thing to do is to have the unique address and phone number for one location on one particular uh, yeah. page on your website and then you could split it up for each of your locations so for our dental folks and uh, this is really important to understand so the example of this is going to be pacific dental so if you look at pacific dental even though they're a huge dso and have thousands of locations each of their locations is individually branded meaning it has its own url with its own address and that is that is a strategy for seo and for lead gen a different strategy would be like aspen aspen puts all of their dentists all of them, they have a couple thousand, I think, uh, locations, put them all on one website. But each of the websites has their own pages with their own addresses, with their own phone numbers. They don't just jumble it all together. That's one of the biggest mistakes that I see as well. So you want to stay away from that. All right. What about believing free SEO analysis with bad news? Break this down for me. Yeah, so you're going to get emails every day from different people trying to give you a free SEO analysis, and you might take them up on their offer or not. But almost every time it's going to come with bad news. Your website doesn't have this, your website is slow. And so basically how it works is there's many different graders out on the website and one grader could show a good score for one thing, like your page speed score, for example, and another grader could show you a bad score for the same thing. So people will just try to scare you with their particular grader to show you, oh, look, you're, you're not doing too well in this area. <laughs> 
Yeah. But um, in terms of what really matters for SEO, I could show you sites that have really bad scores who are ranking at the top, and I could yes. show you sites that aren't ranking well that will get an A plus on these graders. So it's yeah. not the full story with what they come at you with. Yeah, it's not the full story. And we're going to talk about this later. There's a difference between ranking and getting new patients. And we're going to talk, dive into the deep into that. But you cannot, you got to remember, these are marketing people who are reaching out to you. So they're playing on your emotions. So I've seen people with amazing rankings get horrible scores. And of course, they, they're trying to sell them a service. They're trying to get that money from them for SEO. And you got to be very careful because if you work with the wrong company, they'll end up tanking you. I know, Eddie, you've had horror stories of, and I've seen people as well, you've, you've seen some worse ones than me, where people come in to do SEO and they do what's called black hat techniques, meaning they kind of break the rules to get people ranked and they get their URL brand. I actually worked a long time ago with a chiropractor and he was very, very popular. Like he was ranked across everywhere in the city and he did some SEO work with somebody to save a couple hundred bucks because we're gonna, you're gonna help me rank better because I got a bad report and they absolutely nuked his URL, meaning Google will never rank that URL again. It's, it's completely done for. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's uh, talk about hiring foreign companies, uh, hiring a foreign company offering SEO for 200 to $500 a month. Why is this not a good idea? Yeah, so I get emails every day, and you might also <laughs> for people offering cheap SEO services. Yep. Now, they might do some basic what's called on-site optimization. There's both on-site and off-site optimization, but it might it's, it's not gonna be enough to get you to the top. So for example, if in your city you get the top rankings and it produces 30 new patients for you, and you know how much 30 new patients will generate in business for you in the short and long term, logic will tell you that it's not gonna cost $250 to get to those top spots. So what if someone pays 500 or 1,000, you know? Yeah. SEO is in, in, in reality a lot more expensive than what they're offering it for. Or the even worse, here's what I've seen the biggest. So that's a bad situation, but here's even a worse situation. They'll take your 500 bucks a month and they'll do absolutely nothing. They just literally are collecting a check every single month. And you think like, oh no, we got SEO, but it was vague. You don't really know. They made a couple tweaks to your listings or your website. Plus now you've just given access to your website and your listings to somebody overseas and who knows what they're gonna do. I, again, I've seen horrible, horrible situations with that as well. So if it's too good to be true, it's too good to be true. There is no easy fix when it comes to SEO. If there was, then everybody would do it and then it wouldn't work anymore. All right, so thinking another pitfall that we wanna avoid, thinking SEO alone is going to get you a lot of new patients. So what, what do you mean by that exactly? Yeah, so over time, Google has made their advertising look more and more like the free SEO results. So if you remember 10 years ago, the Google ads used to be at the top and on the sides in a green color, and then they changed it to yellow. And then they realized people were not clicking on their ads because they knew they were ads. So nowadays they have converted their advertising to look like free SEO results. They just put little tiny sponsored letters next to them. So even if you're ranked number one in a city, people still have to scroll past the ads, past the maps, and then to the natural results just to get to the free SEO results. So if you're ranking well, it doesn't work as well as it used to before. So that's why you want a two-pronged approach with um, SEO and also advertising because many people click on the advertising at the top because they don't even know that those are even ads. Yeah. We get calls all the time from people saying, hey, I found you number one on Google, but that was one of our ads and that client wasn't even on page one for that particular term. Yeah, exactly. And so people don't, the consumer doesn't generally understand what the ads are versus the rankings and those kind of things. The other thing is, is that even let's say you can rank because I have talked to people who are like, I've ranked here and I got here and uh, I get new patients from it. It's working really well. Here's the honest truth though. It could disappear tomorrow. So you have to take that into account. Just SEO as a business strategy is not a responsible business strategy. Why? Because you could lose it tomorrow based on what Google decides to do with their algorithm, which we don't know what they're going to do with their algorithm, right? I know Eddie, when AI started to roll out, we had an all hands deck conversation like, hey, what is this gonna do to our clients? And we, we were guessing, we're guessing. Like, this is what we think AI is gonna do. Here's how we prepare for it. But we really don't know because we're really at the mercy of Google and what decisions they make with their ranking. So you don't wanna put all your eggs into the SEO basket. And if you are one of those people who you're seeing results from it, that's great. Keep riding that wave. 
But just know that it can be yanked away tomorrow. I've seen so many clients. In fact, Eddie, I don't know if you know this. Before I, we started working with you, uh, this is a long time ago. This is, this is in, uh, what were you, 2024? So I'm thinking like 2014, 2015, 16, somewhere in there. So a long, long time ago. We um, used to run all, for all of our dentists, do all SEO, no ads, because we could rank the maps so well. And this is early days of maps. And we did a great job with that. And then guess what happened overnight? All those results were gone. And I've seen that happen over, remember Panda? Do you remember the Panda update? Mm -hmm. That wrecked a ton of people in the dental industry. I've seen it over and over and over again. Just people just get wrecked with SEO. And so you wanna make sure that you have an extra plan in place of, okay, can I drive new patients, especially if you're multi-location or you're multi-doctor, you have to have a plan that you can continue to get new patients outside of just SEO. So that's a great one. All right, let's look at the next one. Uh, part two. All right. So now that we've covered the pitfalls, let's go into some of the fundamentals and this is going to be high level, just some basic stuff. So let's talk about, you've already mentioned this, like on site. What do you mean when you say on site for SEO? Yeah, on-site just means the things that you have direct control over on your website. So one thing that some people get wrong, which is so basic to do, is to set the correct meta title for your homepage, your website. And all that means is just the text that Google reads and shows in its search results. And also, if you have different tabs open, you can look and read in the tab what the title is. So if you don't deliberately set this, Google is, uh, your, your website's going to set it just after your business name. So if you're called happy, friendly smiles, that's what Google, Google is going to show, but that doesn't tell them who you are, where you're located and things like that. So the best thing you can do for your title is to actually put your biggest keyword first. So if you're in Sacramento, for example, uh, you would want to put Sacramento dentist dash your business name and then dash your state abbreviation to catch all the people who are searching for dentists in Sacramento, California, Sacramento CA dentist. So you want to include your biggest keywords in your meta title, which uh, you have to do deliberately do. Perfect. Okay. And that's something that's just automatic, right? When we get a site, we're doing that every single time. Right. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. Now let's go into adding one H one heading tag per page. So, so other people are going to read that in the dental industry <laughs> and they're going to be like, what in the world are you talking about? Yeah, most webmasters will understand this, but heading tags is usually for styling on a website. So in code, if you put a text in between an H1 tag, that's a heading one tag, that's usually the biggest tag on your website. And what people don't know is Google looks at your heading tags, primarily your H1, to determine also what your site is about. But most people waste this H1 tag on something like welcome to our practice or <laughs> we're glad you're here, something like that. So, so, so one let me, trick. let me, let me just explain uh -huh. this from a different angle. So you go on a website, go on a dental website and you see the first thing on there is welcome to my practice and big, bold letters. That's an H one tag. That's like really, really big. First thing that we want to tell our patients, welcome to our website. Here's the problem. Google's reading that and going, okay, so your SEO that you wanted us to read about is welcome to our practice. You just lost an opportunity. So, so the correct thing would be is like this one is Lutz Family Dentistry because you want people who type in dentistry or family dentistry or your city name dentistry, you're going to come up for that. So those are the, that's how you want to use your, your headers. Is, did I get that right, Eddie? Yes. Uh, in, in this case, in the Lutz example here in the screenshot, their title is actually, their business name is actually the keywords that they would want to rank for. Mm. So... But family dentistry gets less volume than just let's dentist. So if you look at the second screenshot, we took a normal phrase in just the paragraph, let's dentist, and we converted it to an H1 tag. And any webmaster will know how to style your text. You can make it look like anything. So it doesn't mm. have to be the biggest text on your website. And it's a little trick to tell Google that your H1 is your main keyword while not having it look, you know, super like big. Like a big header. And do... do... Mm -hmm. Is that, and that's allowed. You're allowed to do that. You're not going to get it banned mm -hmm. by Google or anything like that. Okay, good. We don't want to go to jail. Yep, totally allowed. All right, good. All right, so let's talk about the other on-site SEO fundamentals. So having a good amount of unique content on the homepage. And, uh, and then let's, let's talk about that one first. So what, what do you mean by that unique content? Yeah, so Google is a computer. They just scour the web for content. Um, most dental websites are very image heavy when you come on, you know, smiling families, uh, things like that. So 
we recommend adding some sort of content on your homepage and also your service pages, but you don't want to bore people with just paragraphs and paragraphs of text. So there's special ways to make your content look good to people. And one particular way that we do it is we'll create service blurbs, just these little tiles that will give you the different keywords that you offer, services that you offer with maybe um, a few sentences of description for each one. So this will help your homepage rank for your different services that you have while adding um, more quantity of content to your site. And then awesome. um, for the service pages also, um, some people will just do one page that just shows all their different services, you know, a list of their 10 services, for example. But for SEO, it would actually be very good to create a unique page for each page because that will add quantity of content to your website and also help improve your rankings. Yeah, and the thing I find is so interesting about this, at least this is how it was not too long ago, and maybe it's changed, so you can correct me, is that a lot of times your service pages, no one even looks at them besides Google, right? Like the patients Correct. aren't clicking sure. through for a lot of these keywords. They're just like, oh, you're a dentist. You must do it. But you got to have them there and they still need to be there. They're really important for SEO. So that's that's a huge, huge part. And it, And you have to, here's another thing. You have to name them what patients search for, not what the dentist calls it. So the dentist will say things. I hear this one all the time. Cosmetic dentist. I want a cosmetic dentist, but you know, and I know Eddie patients don't search cosmetic dentists in most markets. Most markets, they type veneers, Invisalign, straighten my teeth, whatever it may be. And so if you name your page cosmetic dentist, you just wasted an opportunity to be able to rank that to a, a keyword that people are actually going to search. So I I'm a hundred percent with, with you on that. And then the other thing, what are your thoughts on in dental? I feel like in dental, a lot of people just copy and paste content from other sites. And I feel like it's very common, but that really hurts you because Google can see that. And they instantly, if you're the second one to post that content, they de-rank, basically say you're not going to rank, right? Correct. Yeah. Unique content is a big ranking factor for Google. So if you're using copied content, you're not likely to rank well. And there's actually a service called Copyscape, copyscape.com, which will allow people to go and paste the URL or some, some content, and they can check to see if that content exists anywhere else on the web. So some marketing companies will take all this content for implants, veneers, and they'll okay. use the same content across their 50 different clients. And that's no good. Usually yep. the first guy who gets the unique content might rank well, <laughs> yeah. but all the other 49 will not rank well just because they're using and, the same canned content. And I know what dentists are thinking right now. You're thinking, well, how stupid are these marketing companies? Here's the thing. The people who do that usually don't aren't worried about SEO. They're not thinking. They're usually doing it as a service. I've seen like different implant companies where they're like, we're going to give you landing pages and all the content for your website. Here you go. But they didn't tell you that it wasn't unique and it's actually going to hurt you. And I've seen that over and over and over again in the dental industry. Um, so you got to be really, really careful of that. Um, all right. So next, let's talk about artificial intelligence. So how SEO, how SEO people are using AI for keywords, research, and content creation. Yeah, so AI, it's the latest craze. Everyone's talking about it. Um, for SEO, how people are using AI right now is for keyword research and content creation. Now, the keyword research, that's pretty easy because in dental, we already pretty much know what people will be searching for to, to find you, you know, city dentist, dentist and city, and things like that. But where AI shines uh, for dental is the content creation. So how we were just talking about, you want to have content for your websites, AI will... Uh, shortcut you, you know, weeks, weeks and weeks and hundreds and thousands of dollars potentially. Mm. Okay. So you got to be careful of that. And then, okay. So yeah, where is it? Is a, yeah, go ahead. There is one pitfall for AI. So many people don't know that the content that they get from AI, for example, chat GPT uh, is uh, scraped from across the web. So back to the unique content we were talking about, if you search give me a thousand word article on dental implants and you use what it gives you, it could sound very well, but many, many other people could also be using the same article on their website. And as we said, unique content is better for SEO. So if you were to go that route and use AI content, you would just want to make sure that you have someone rewrite the words or tweak it a little bit instead of using the, the same content. So AI right now, cause like you hear AI all the time and it's so confusing about like what's good and what's not. So AI right now is in a place where basically use it as a starting place to help you, but then you still have to do your legwork because sometimes AI lies, right? Like, uh, did you just mm -hmm. see how um, 
Google's AI, they got shut down because someone put into their, um, into, I think it was Bard, but they changed it to Gemini. They put into Gemini, make me a picture of the founding fathers. And they made them all, um, uh, black. They were all black people and all these people. And then someone was like, show me uh, this person, all these historical pictures. They were all wrong. They were off. Everybody was wrong. Everybody was off. And they kept trying to tell the AI like, Hey, this is wrong. But it was like, no, it's not. It's right. So AI can lie to you and be deceiving, but look really good. Like the images it made look good. It was just not historically accurate. So you can definitely end up with some really bad information, really bad keywords that you think are great keywords, but they're not. And there's even people out there that are not marketing experts talking about this and talking about how great it is, but you got to be very, very careful. You got to know how to do your homework, use your Google tools, and then always, always, always scrub the content, always scrub the content. So important. Awesome. And then, um, you touched on that already. Okay. So now let's talk about some of the offsite, uh, SEO fundamentals. So this is the fun stuff, Eddie. I know you, this is like where you really, really shine. Yeah. So anyone can do the onsite stuff and you can even do some of the offsite stuff yourself, but the first offsite optimization that you want to do is you want to make sure that you have all of your social media profiles claimed. And the big ones are Facebook, Google, Yelp, Bing, and Apple Maps. You might find out as you search that you might not have an Apple Maps listing, for example. So the more of those listings you have, the more of a legitimate business that you're seeing in, in Google's eyes. Curveball. So once every like six months, someone comes to me and goes, should I be ranked on Alexa voice? How does, how does that work? And like, should, is that something that people need to worry about? Uh, Alexa voice, it's, it's kind of taking off right now where people are just at home and they want to search, you know, uh, Alexa, tell me this or show me this. But in terms of dental, people still want to see who their dentist is. They want to see the site. They want to see the reviews. So that's not something that I would where Where someone might use Alexa is like, Hey, Alexa, call ABC dental. And so they calls it right. It it passes you through that way, but it's not going to, Hey, no one's going, Hey, Alexa, what dentist should I go to? Like you can't Correct. really yeah. do a lot of research on reviews and location and those kind of things. So it doesn't, it doesn't make as much sense for that. Okay. So what, uh, mm-hmm. what about making sure your information matches? Is this like around uh, NAP? NAP. Yeah. So for example, one site might say suite 3A and another site might say unit 3A. You actually want it to match as much as possible. So yeah. small things like that matter. Sweet so name, so the NAP board. is name, address, and phone number. And so where I've seen people really flub this one is like their Google listing says Dr. Smith DDS. And then their website says ABC Dental that Dr. Smith works at. Well, those are not the same name. You have a dentist name and then you have a practice name. They need to be the same and it's spelled exactly mm-hmm. the same. Everything needs to be the same. And here's another one that I've seen, Eddie. I've seen people with... They'll go to a Yelp, like Yelp's famous for this, or some of these other companies where they'll go, hey, we're going to drive leads through Yelp for you. So we need to put a unique tracking number just on Yelp. And we need to put a unique phone number just on your Facebook. So as we run Facebook ads, everybody comes to that number and then we can track it, which sounds good because you're like, yeah, that makes sense. Now I can track all my leads through Yelp or through Facebook. But what's the problem with that, Eddie? It's not the same phone number as your main website phone number. So that's considered inconsistent NAP. Yeah. And so you get, you get deranked, you get slapped for that, right? The more inconsistencies you have, the more, the less you're going to rank really, really important. Mm-hmm. And again, it's so confusing. I get why dentists get so confused because different marketing people will say different things about this, but this is actually how Google looks at it. Not necessarily how we look at it versus another marketing company. Exactly. Our, all right, so now let's talk about why people aren't ranking. So this is this is the fun part. So why aren't people ranking? All right, so let's talk about yeah. this one. So first and foremost, you, your site or location could be too new. So if you're new in business, uh, you're you're going up against other dentists in the city who have been around for years and sometimes even decades. So you basically need your site to season in Google's eyes to show that you're a legitimate business because illegitimate businesses are not likely to keep paying for websites, you know, tracking phone numbers and things like that. So the longer you've been in business, the better. And usually um, the more bigger the city is, the more longer you'll need to be in business before you can actually try to rank because uh, just because of how many people in competition there are. Great point. Okay. We touched on this one a little bit. Anything else you want to consistent nap? 
Uh, yeah. yeah. So also there's the URL portion of it. So if you're multi-location, you want to make sure that your your URL is going to the correct location. So for example, .com slash Roseville. If you have a Roseville listing, you want to make sure that the URL is going to the Roseville part of your site. You don't want it going to the homepage or to another location. So. Awesome. Let's talk about um, a previous company built spammy links to you and hurt your SEO. Mm -hmm. So back in the day, you mentioned it with uh, Penguin and then Panda. Those are the animals Google calls um, for SEO penalties. Uh, back in the day, there's something called anchor text, the words that someone links to to your website, anchor text. So back in the day, if all of your anchor text said Sacramento dentist, Sacramento dentist, and all of your links were that, you would rank pretty well for Sacramento dentists, but then Google realized people were doing that and they would, they just slapped everyone across the board. So if you have someone who has done outdated SEO tactics to your website, like using the same anchor text or using low quality links, like from forums and things like that, Google knows those tricks nowadays and they can penalize your site and not, not rank you well. And that's just one example. There's literally thousands of examples like that, that people have done mm -hmm. stupid things. And again, you get what you pay for, right? If I go to the dentist, Eddie, and I say, hey, I got $3. What can you do to help my teeth? The dentist is going to kind of look at me kind of crazy, right? Like $3, what do you what do you want for $3? I can give you a candy bar. That's it. And But it's the same thing with SEO. If you're like, hey, I, I want $100 SEO a month or $300 SEO a month, what do you think they're going to do? Do you think they're on the cutting edge of SEO technology at $300 a month in a foreign country and don't understand the language? <laughs> Probably not, right? So you're going to really set yourself up for failure if you let the wrong people touch your sites and touch your SEO. Okay, what about this one? Most common, just not enough relevance or authority in the eyes of Google. Yeah, this is the biggest reason we see why people aren't ranking. So the people who are ranking at the top of Google have the most authority and relevance in their eyes. So if you're not there, it's probably because Google doesn't see you as an authoritative site in your city. So that's what we do. We, we build the correct links and do the correct things off-site and on-site to help build your authority and relevance in Google. Awesome. Um, now, what about what about with something I've seen? And I think this may be on the next uh, one of these later slides, but what happens if someone ranks but they don't have any google reviews and everybody else has google reviews <laughs> so we'll t did we talk about that one later i think we do right uh i don't think so but google reviews is a ranking factor but you can have enough authority with backlinks going to your site that you might not need the reviews but it certainly helps to have so what but i've we'll, seen is... we'll talk about that okay okay good okay i want to dive into that um let's see here and let's talk about the next one all right, it could be too competitive. So help me understand this. Competitive, yeah. So uh, I'll, I'll give this one with an example. So Beverly Hills Cosmetic Surgeon, everyone wants to go to the best dentist, the one that works on movie stars and things like that, but it could take a $100,000 investment for four or five, six months to get to the top. Now, once you're there, you could be making 400,000 in production each month, but you would have to have the original investment to get there and some people don't have that much to, to get to the top so that's what i mean by too competitive is just it's a, a market that a lot of people want to rank for because they know the business that they would get from it so sometimes it's better to actually from a strategy standpoint to invest more money into ads because it's cheaper right mm -hmm. awesome oh yeah, yeah. Uh, all right. So leveling up. So let's talk through leveling up. Okay. So this is like the meat and the potatoes of what we are going to be talking about here. So leveling up citation, cleanup and building. Yeah. So a citation is basically any website that lists your business information, your name, your address, your phone, and your URL. So one example I could give is Facebook or yellow pages, things like that. So the more citations that you have, and the more consistent information you have, the better. Now you can go and you can manually go to all these sites and create profiles to create these citations or to fix your information if it's wrong, but there's some tools out there that will automate the process like um, Yext, for example, or Moz Local. And we do use those tools to help us just speed things up and create, create more citations and get the existing ones fixed. So we put all of our clients in those tools, right? So everybody gets put into those. And then that not only helps us manage it, but they also help keep everything locked down. Because one thing that I've seen Google do 
you'll change your name to what it's supposed to be. And what will they do, Eddie? <laughs> They'll just change it back. I'll change it on you. Yep. <laughs> yeah. They're like, we'll oh, get no. notified. Yeah. They're just like, no, we'll we get don't. get notified that they're changing. Yeah. So, so Google will just make a change because they think it's best for the algorithm. And most of the time people don't notice it. But what these tools actually help you do is they see, nope, Google just changed it again. And then you can just go quick and change it back. But Google will just change things. They'll change your phone number. They'll change your name. They'll change your pictures. They'll change just about anything they want because the Google Maps actually belong to Google. That's what most people don't realize. It's not your property. It's actually Google's property. All right. Mm -hmm. Let's. All right. Business profiles. Yeah, business profiles. So there's websites on the web called Web 2.0 sites, and they're basically free blogs that you can create. So what you can do, some examples are WordPress and Weebly, for example. You can create a profile for yourself, and you can put your own information, your name, address, phone, and URL back to yourself. And what that would do is that will create another citation to yourself on a site that didn't exist before. So like yellowpages.com, but instead of yellow pages, it'll be WordPress or Weebly. And this will create one extra backlink to yourself. Got it. And do we do this for all, like for most of our clients, right? We do for most people who are working we with do us. This, yeah. yeah, we go through and do all that legwork for them. Okay, good, mm -hmm. good. Because um, it's a lot of work. Um, that that portion oh, is yeah. not something you just you just go in and just takes five minutes to do. You have to go through each one of them. Okay, so what what uh, what about the relevance network? Yeah, relevance network. So ranking on Google is authority and relevance. So one way that we help build relevance to clients is we'll take the same Web 2.0 blogs and websites and we'll create some content about a local attraction in the city, um, restaurants or museums and things like that. And then we can create driving directions to our client in that city. And then in a little bit of time, Google will find these sites and index them and see that this dentist is nearby this attraction and it will tie the city and the attraction to your practice. So this will so help smart. build your relevance. Freeway, it's just work, right? And this is why the $200 mm -hmm. people don't make sense is because if you're paying $200, they're not gonna take the time. Even Or even if you're paying $1,000 and they're overseas, do they actually understand what the relevant stuff is in your, in your area? Or do they know what the relevant uh, areas are or the events going on? Probably not, right? Because there's a huge cultural dis uh, disconnection there. Mm -hmm. All right, so local directory links. Yes, so for this one, almost every city out there will have some type of business directories, either for the city or a particular industry. So the more of these links that you can get, the better for your site. One famous one that almost every city has is a Chamber of Commerce link. So these these are usually not free links. They're, they're maybe 300 a year to get. But if you can get your business listed on a Chamber of Commerce, for example, you'll get a link back to your website and Google will see the link and see that you're tied to the city, which helps build your relevance for your city. city name. The city name. Yeah. Make sure that it's the same city mm -hmm. that you're, that you want to be ranked in, obviously. <laughs> and the reason Google does that is because a scammer is never going to do that. A fake business or a fly by night business that's going to scam people is never going to take the time to do that. So that's an yeah, easy way. For that's just, um, that's one example, but there's also free directories too. So if you can find the free, like Los Angeles business directory or something mm -hmm. like that and get listed, that'll help you out as well. All right. So here's the big secret. So this is something that Eddie has been working on. How, how long have we worked together on this kind of stuff, Eddie, that, that you've been building this out for Dennis? Over five years. <laughs> over five years. So yeah, way over five years. Um, so walk through the private blog network and this is like big brain stuff, guys. You're, I promise you <laughs> there's no webinar that you're going to hear about on this or, or, or people breaking this down for the dental industry. You might hear it about in other industries, but not in the dental industry. So Eddie, why don't you walk us through this portion of it? Yeah. So in terms of ranking, again, it's relevancy and authority. So on the authority side, if it depends on who recommends you, you know, someone they don't know recommends you, okay, whatever. But if someone with power recommends you, you have more um, authority. So what, how it applies to websites is you can get websites that have expired and you can purchase them and convert them to dental websites and link to yourself. So these websites, they expired for whatever reason. Most of the time it's just dentists who have um, retired or something. They just let their websites go. Mm -hmm. What you're doing is you're getting websites already with power and you're linking to yourself to get that power coming to you. So the authority, so let me just break this down in, in a, a little bit more layman's terms. So you're going out on the web and there's these websites all the time. There's thousands of URLs every day that are expiring. 
And then when they expire, they're, they come up for grab. Anybody can grab them. And so if you can find the ones in the dental industry that have authority, meaning they've been around for a long time, they already have SEO juice behind them because they've just been around just for the length of time, you can actually buy those, build a blog network, and then you can point to your dental practice. Or what Eddie has done, which is super smart, is he builds multiple of them and he points back to each other to build up their relevance, then points it back out to other dental websites to help our clients rank. This is something that you can do and it's totally allowed, right, Eddie? This is not something that's black hat or anything like that, right? Yeah, it's allowed. There's nothing stopping you from buying URLs expired. Yeah, it's just a quicker way to get that authority juiced back to your to your practice. So absolutely love that. Um, Eddie, you do a great job of that. Is there another slide? Yeah, so the ultimate secret private blog yeah, network. Yeah, so I just wanted to, to mention... Uh, the analogy I can give for SEO is doing all the on-site stuff is like tying your shoes for a marathon, but then you have to run the marathon after. So the on-site stuff is very basic stuff that anyone can do, but you're not going to get very far in the marathon if you don't tie your shoes. So you have to, you have to tie your shoes first. You have to do all the on-site stuff, but what you don't know is people can hide these links. Like if you use a backlink checker, you might not find these high powered links going to people sites. So you might not even have a chance to rank in your particular city if there are other SEO people who are doing this strategy. And if someone tries to see and check if they're doing the strategy, you might not even be able to tell. So you already are at this a disadvantage if you, if you want to SEO well in your city, but other people are applying these blog network links to themselves. Awesome. Okay, that's yeah, so great. So in terms of the, you asked about the reviews, Oh yeah. If you have enough, if you have enough links going to you, it might be possible to outrank someone with reviews. Even you, it would just take a lot more links Juice. to get there. But I've, that's I've why seen that's it. why I've we seen want it in competitive most. markets where people will rank all of a sudden and they'll have like fifty reviews and everybody else has a thousand. But here's the thing, Eddie. This is the part that dentists sometimes miss. Who's who's searching for a dentist and going to the guy with fifty reviews when everybody else has a thousand? Nobody. Right. So this is probably the biggest part that most people miss is that there's a huge difference between ranking and getting new patients. And so the best thing you can do is talk to a marketing expert and not just any marketing expert, not some guy overseas, but somebody who only works in dental because there is synergy between your ads and SEO. There are cases where SEO is much more powerful and you need to pull back on your ads. And there are other cases where ads, you should be 100% of your focus or 90% of your focus and SEO should be a much smaller focus because the cost that it's gonna to be to drive you a new patient. That's what you really wanna break down and that's what you really wanna understand. And so if you are listening to this and you're not a client of ours, we'll do a free marketing review and we'll break that down for you. And so you can scan this, take a listen to it, and uh, talk to somebody on our team, actually talk to somebody and get an understanding of, hey, what are you doing for SEO? And what can I do to level up? Or what can I do to get more new patients in other ways? And we'd love to talk to you, love to help you with that. And if you're listening to this on a podcast, then you wanna go to go, G-O dot, smcnational.com forward slash SEO. Again, it's go dot, smcnational.com forward slash SEO. Eddie, Thank you so much for coming on, sharing your expertise. You're welcome, you did an amazing Pleasure. job. Thank you for everybody watching. Bye-bye.